My name is Ian Ross, I'm a member of Kirk and Tully Speakers Club and my speech title is The Voice of Rugby. William Pollock McLaren CBE lived his life in a narrow field, that field being Hoyk in the Scottish Borders and Rugby Union. And yet, if I was a betting man, I would wager that you'd heard of him. I would wager that you would recognise his voice and I would wager that you'd actually heard him speak. Because he was the voice of rugby and was for nigh on 50 years. But sadly, on my birthday earlier this year, Bill passed away after a battle with Alzheimer's. Bill was born in Hoyk in 1923. He tells a story of growing up as a boy of eight in Hoyk. His father comes home after a day's work at the textile mill to find Bill sitting in the garden wall, commentating into an imaginary microphone on the antics and games of his friends playing around him. He achieved both his early ambitions of playing for his local rugby team, Hoyk, and of becoming a teacher of physical education at the local high school. In 1941, at the age of 18, he was called up and saw action with the Royal Artillery at Monte Cassino in Italy one of the most horrific theatres of war. But he returned safely to progress with his careers. I say careers because not only did he become a teacher, but his rugby playing was of such a high standard that he was on the brink of gaining his first Scottish cap. But fate played a mean hand to Bill, and he was struck down with tuberculosis in 1947. He was referred to a sanatorium and expected at best to be ill for four years, if indeed he was to survive at all. He was invited to take part in trials for a new drug, streptomycin, developed to tackle the scourge of TB. Bill was involved in a local trial group of six people and was one of only two to survive. So did fate play Bill a mean hand? Maybe because he did say that he would have traded all the matches that he had watched and all the matches he had commentated on for just one Scottish cap. Or maybe not from our point of view, because he then began commentating on Rugby Special and became like a favourite uncle to so many people all around the world. He was universally liked because of his passion, his deep knowledge of the game, the clear manner in which he passed this knowledge and information on to his audience, his unbiased commentary, and of course, his legendary terms of phrase. I used to be a rugby referee in the west of Scotland. On one occasion, I was appointed as fourth official at a Scotland versus England under 18 match. The match was being televised and Bill was commentating. Such was the thoroughness of his preparation that he sought me out to find some background on me, just in case I was called on, in the very unlikely scenario of an injury to one of the three main match officials. When Tony, when Tony Stanger had just scored that famous try for Scotland in the 1990 Grand Slam match at Murrayfield, the stadium erupted. All around Bill in the commentary box must have been mayhem and yet in the seconds immediately following the try he managed to tell us, the audience, that Tony was 21 years old, it was his first try in a championship match but his sixth try for Scotland and that it was his sixth match for Scotland. Lots of information coming from the man who did know it all. He exuded the Corinthian spirit. Everything had to be fair and above board, although he was deeply, deeply committed to Scotland and its success, he always played with a straight bat, if you'll pardon the mixed sporting metaphors. He could never be accused of favouring Scotland in his commentary. He always praised players and didn't blame them. He always saw the good, not the bad. Although winning was important, 
so was taking part, current day commentators and pundits should look and learn. I can't do the voice, but Bill came out with some wonderful phrases. He kicked that ball like a three pound haggis. Of Ireland's winger Simon Gagan, who would will himself forward and break through tackles by flaying his arms around. Bill referred to him as a demented octopus. And of, no and of New Zealand's Jonah Lomu, a giant of a man, as fast as an Olympic sprinter, who would simply run over his would-be tackler. I'm not a hod carrier, but if I was facing him, I'd be dropping bricks. These sorts of memories of Bill will bring smiles of appreciation to people for years to come. I'll miss, we all will miss, the voice of rugby, because the voice of rugby is now silent.